Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Keith B. Dixon, and today we're going to be talking about how I use Perfectly Clear in my workflow, and um, hopefully you'll walk away today with just a little better feeling about using Perfectly Clear if you have the program. If you don't, um, my goal today is definitely to give you a pretty good understanding as to what it can do. And um, with that said, let's let's get started. I got a lot of information I'm going to cover, and if you can hear me. Just go ahead and send me a uh, just a quick message at the bottom. I'll be I'm gonna I'm gonna be working through a lot of different scenarios. So if you have questions, uh, we'll, we'll definitely get to them right about at the bottom of the hour. So um, that'll give you time to kind of formulate your questions, and uh, maybe I'll cover some information that you might be um, thinking about. So that'll save us some more time, and I can cover more areas. Today we're gonna be focusing mostly on portraits and um, different types of portraits, environmentals, um, on location, the on the client's location, and uh, a few event photographers. I'm gonna also show you some batch features that, uh, that Perfectly Clear is able to do and talk about how we can use facial recognition to um, enhance our photos and just kind of give you the threshold in terms of the depth uh, that a person needs to be at in order for the facial recognition to, to work accurately. All right. Here we go. So send me a quick message if you guys can hear me okay. And uh, I'll be checking in at the bottom of the hour. Okay, here we go. So again, my name is Keith B. Dixon. I'm a commercial photographer. I specialize in corporate event photography, print on site, and location, ex executive location portraiture, and group portraitures, as well as a few other brands that I have architectural have an architectural brand and a consumer brand that focuses on weddings and events. If you're on social media, here's how you can find me. I'm on Twitter. Twitter is a great way to contact or basically connect with me and uh, on, on a pretty regular basis. I'm, I'm on Twitter daily at, at various times. And um, matter of fact, uh, if, if you have a Twitter account or Facebook account, just mention perfectly clear and I'll send you a discount code. So that's that should be your incentive for today. So mention perfectly clear on Twitter and I will definitely send you a discount code. I'm also on Facebook, Keith B. Dixon. I have articles on examiner.com on various products and workflows that I do. Pinterest this is a collection of everything. So you can kind of see all of my social media right on Pinterest and Google Plus if you're a Google Plus user. Okay. So there's a lot of different apps out there, and they all do applications. Uh, they all do a lot of different things. Perfectly Clear is, is uh, different in that case. Perfectly Clear is more of an image correction tool. There's going to be cases where if you're working an event, a client's going to um, just have you moving around constantly. Your situation to be very dynamic, and that's going to prevent you in a lot of cases from doing the proper white balances that you might need because you're going to be going from one extreme to the other, one lighting situation to another. And sometimes it's really hard to just do those custom white balances. And that's where white balance on your camera obviously comes into play. And if you're using a program like Perfectly Clear, you're going to be able to correct those in post very quickly through through syncing. And that's, that's really the most important part. Also bringing back, uh, let's say you're shooting a low contrast situation, that will typically mute your, your colors and create color cast. Perfectly Clear is going to allow you to, to tackle those issues, um, which is ultimately going to save you time. So let's get started here. I'm going to dive right out. Um, file structure is very important. It's, it's really easy to get turned around in Lightroom. And, and this is what I want to say about file structure. So you want to be clear that your understanding your file structure created in your operating system if you're using in your operating system if you're using it in windows if let's say you're a windows user or a mac user be sure that you understand how your files are set up so that you can um, always know visually and based on what you know about the file structure that you can find your work especially when you're importing and exporting so that's going to be really important okay so let's get to perfectly clear i'm going to be using lightroom and lightroom is probably one of the most popular programs that uh, photographers are using today. And there are other programs. There's Capture One, there's Nikon's uh, 
um, proprietary software that works with their cameras, all kinds of stuff, photo mechanic. But um, since Lightroom is, is the mainstream, we're going to use Lightroom. Okay, so I'm going to be working out of this panel, and I'll be uh, switching back and forth to develop mode. So we'll be going back and forth. If you're not familiar with Lightroom, um, these are the primary two areas that you work out of. And we, in develop mode, this is where we're going to find our presets. Now, let's talk about batch processing. Um, here's a portrait of a This is done for a client. And I'm just going to go right over to develop mode. And I'm going to turn on my, my highlight and shadow indicators. And as you can see, they're starting to light up blue. That's telling me basically there's a loss of detail there, right? This is important before going into... Okay, hang on a second here. Let me just turn that off. That shouldn't have been on. Um, that's going to be important. Let me just, okay, there we go. That's going to be important because it's going to tell you where, where you have a loss of detail. And I'm going to go right down here to Lightroom, and I'm just going to drag. So at this point, when you see something like this, you have a, a massive loss of detail. It's, it, it's not going to, the photo is not going to render properly. And the more you adjust it, the more you start to introduce noise and all kinds of other issues that could basically hamper the quality of your photo. So keep that in mind. So when you see that sometimes, and the great thing about Lightroom is you can just go in and adjust it down and boom. Now, there's a lot of programs out there and the term that I want to use um, universally is garbage in, garbage out. If you have a bad file, no program is going to make it better. So you want to start with a good exposure and that's just good fundamental photography. Start with good exposures. They don't have to be great. They just have to be good. Sometimes you can get a, uh, an, you can create an image that's less than um, a balanced exposure, greater than a balanced exposure, and still make it work. All right, so let's batch process this image because I want to show you some of the time-saving features in, in Lightroom, and, I mean, in Perfectly Clear. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select this folder. I'm going to go back to library mode so you can kind of see my file structure. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to go Shift, Command, and that's going to open up this dialog box and right from the top you'll see once you install the software you're just going to select Athen Tech perfectly clear version 2 right um, and you'll see their dialog box just pop in right here we can use the system presets right these are all one button clicks once we uh, launch into the program or I can use my own presets which I've already established and I number my presets so that I can able so that I can see them a lot faster if I'm working through. So I usually put numbers on. All right, so I'm just going to change that back to system and correction folder. So you can definitely point to a location where you want to save it. I use a folder called corrections for mine. So I know that that file's been through perfectly clear. Um, you could rename it JPEG. I just have this set for 1500, which gives me about a two or three meg file at a uh, 240 meg uh, resolution. All right, I'm just going to click export. And these are NEF files. So if you're a Nikon user, these are raw files, essentially. So I'm bringing raw files in. I mostly work with raw files. Rarely do I shoot JPEGs unless I'm doing a wireless transfer at an event um, or we're doing a print on site. I'll use JPEG photos. But for the most part, I like to use the uh, NEF files. And as you can see, it opened up pretty quickly here. Okay, so here's our subject, and let me just give you a quick overview of the interface. It's very simple, and this is what really got me interested in Perfectly Clear and using the program, is literally just a one-button touch for everything. And as you can see, the image is changing pretty quickly, right? And I'm not working on some super big computer. I'm just on a MacBook Air. It's my, my travel computer, so when I'm on the road, this is, this is what I use, a MacBook Air. It's not souped up. So as you can see, there, it's worked, the program works pretty efficiently in terms of speed. Then right at the bottom, you can zoom in and out. Voila. Voila. Right? And then here's our navigation. So we can just click from image to image. And then tutorials. So if you want to watch some of my webinars from the past, you can just click on that. It'll take you right out. It tells you a little bit about the company and a help button. Now here's, a, here's an important feature, and you have to kind of figure out how you're going to use this in your workflow. I like to click on the screen to see my changes. I literally like to do this. It helps me, it helps my eyes to adjust faster. Um, 
side-by-side -side comparison so you can see right away just by clicking the fixed tent our before and our after right and one of the our, our most of the photographers that work with us they love this feature right here and, and a lot of the presenters they love to do this because it, it I mean look at the, look at the difference here from here to here it's pretty amazing right now you know these specular highlights in, in their in their face there and this is one of the reasons why I chose this photo sometimes subjects will wear non-camera ready makeup and it'll create a shine in the camera right one of the ways you can fix that right away is just to go in to Lightroom and turn down that highlight just like that because we can get it back um, Perfectly clear is discriminating. It's not going to, if you adjust, you need to adjust the highlight. It's not going to adjust the highlight according to the entire image. It's going to adjust the highlight in the problem area. And, and here's one of the ways it approaches. I'm going to keep this really simple. If you look at RGB, red, blue, and green, at, at a certain point in, a, in the color spectrum, when RGB crosses path, all those color spectrums cross paths, it turns completely white. And that allows perfectly clear to target on those whites that may be abnormal in your image and correct them. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's go back to perfectly clear. And, and that's one of the ways we could tackle that. Or we could just go in and adjust down. Here's our first three. It deals with tone, color, and clarity. So um, clarity, obviously, is if you sharpen your image, you're, you're going to get a sharper sharper more three I like to say 3d type of image right color we can pump up our color vibrancy the fidelity that's going to give us just more color signal right depth and exposure um, these are this is the meat and gravy of the program but when you get down into portrait and eyes right here's where it gets a little interesting so she's got a big smile another reason big eyes right um, perfectly clear uses a facial recognition software so if you're familiar with those other guys out there they have the program where you click here you click there you click there you click there you click there you got to select and kind of move it up figure out where the hairline imagine doing that for like 15 portraits I did for years and it slowed me down here's the thing as a photographer you don't want to get into a habit of over editing or taking longer than possible because it's going to slow you down right so if I want to override some of the settings I'm going to go here and I'm going to pick beautify right um, it's really just that that simple if we look at I'm going to let me click over here if we look at here and here as you can see we've corrected a lot of the textural things that are going on that basically could take take away from the photo right this is the one button control that you have that that's pretty soft some clients like that right it, it, it's really subjective to be honest with you in fashion sometimes they just totally smooth the skin out right so it's really subjective the thing that I want you to realize is when you're making adjustments like this you got to be really careful and check the edges right here see how we've got that little um, we've got that noise that's being introduced into the image so you got to be really careful we can back that off right Boom. So we just backed it off right here. Right. So you see the difference there. So we still have some texture in the skin. This is OK. Um, these type of things right here is probably oil in the skin, makeup. It could be a lot of things. Easy fix in Photoshop. Right. And Lightroom depending. Right. This type of stuff. I would literally kind of reduce that a little bit. So when I'm sending proofs to a client I want the proof to be as close to a, a good edit as possible that's going to be really 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 important when you're um, when you're sending your proofs because if you've got a lot of dark images like this oh here's your proof I haven't edited them yet they're not going to be as excited about them because every time they look they're not going to be able to get past these textural issues in, in their skin so keep that in mind all right I'm going to cancel that out or actually let me just show you this the facial part okay so if I go here and I click on um, eye enlarge right here's how the facial recognition works you see that I could literally apply this setting without even going into perfectly clear from Lightroom I could apply this setting across all three of these images right all three of these and you see her head position is changing right I could apply that to all three of these images in a batch process which means I'm going to group together a bunch of images 
I'm going to pick a setting, apply it, and then export it right back into Lightroom. And, and here's what that looks like. So I'm going back to Lightroom. Here is, uh, so here's the corrections. I'm going to open this up a little bit so you guys can see it here. And we're just going to, you see where I've enlarged the eyes there and her head position has changed? That's the power in, in the facial recognition in, in this particular program. So if you needed to enlarge the eyes um, in a photograph or you needed to whiten teeth, you could literally, literally just go in and select your best eight photos, um, best 10 photos, which I usually do in a portrait session. I, I give the client 10 options, right? 10 great options. I don't need to go in and edit each individual photo. All I have to do is basically pick out the ones that I want and batch process them and send them right back to the client as a proof. And then we can go into a further edit. See how that works? Isn't that, that I mean, it's just a great time saving feature. And that was the thing that turned me on about this program, the time saving feature. All right, let's look at some environmental portraits. Now, in the last image, um, the client was up close and fake facial recognition works perfectly there. No problems. But when you have an image like this, um, probably not going to happen for you. And I want you to know that because I want you to know the thresholds, right? I'm in develop mode. I've got both of the highlight and the, um, the shadows clicked on. As you can see, we're going to get a little detail loss here. And this is a key for you right here. I want you to know that this is the primary subject. By the way, this is uh, Tammy Bronner's place for the globe trotters. Uh, this is her high school. And this is an actual unedited image. So in the edited image, I, I, th I actually think they use this. Um, she was, um, she had an, a deal with it, or still, still may, has a deal with Adidas and um, a few other uh, companies. So we shot a series of images for her. And what I did is I obviously took the cord out and this is not in the photograph, but this is a, a tail, right? I know that anything that's this close to the camera, that's, that's going to be black. If I, enhance it, enhance the blacks. I'm going to start to basically introduce a lot of grain and noise into the photograph, right? So you want to keep that in mind going in. This is how I think about when I'm shooting my images, how I'm going to use the program. There's lights, for example, there's lights over here. As you see, there's a light there. There's a light over in the corner here. It's backlit. Uh, I wanted to give it sort of a natural feel, right? And you can see the light kind of bouncing off the wall. They're coming straight on. All right. Another thing, so I'm showing you these images because I want you I want you to know going into any program when you have detail loss like this, um, this is the image that you've seen on the cover, and the, some of the things that I do is I'll go in the, from Lightroom and just bring these up. Well, if you enlarge that image, you can start to see um, where it's just really starting to break apart there. So if I'm going in a perfectly clear with this, right, I'm going to use whatever adjustments I need to use sparingly. Matter of fact, I'm going to just zoom right out of here. I'm going to go back to fit. And once I see that, I'm not going to adjust this down. And, and I'm showing you how I'm going to start this image into perfectly clear. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pump up my blues. I want this just a little bit more blue. So I'm just going to increase that saturation slightly, right? I'm going to increase the vibrance slightly. And this is literally how I'm doing this. Backstory on this image. Uh, a buddy of mine has called me up one day. He says, Keith, you know, I want an image for, uh, he's a music producer. I need an image from my site. Can you just come by? I literally said, hey, I can come by today. It's the only time that I have. There's a flash sitting right here with a grid on it. And it's boom, we were done. Literally a jailed flash. And there's also one in the back there, right? Let's take that into perfectly clear. And I did shift command E. Um, but if you're a menu driven type of person, you can just go right up here, click export. And it's going to get you there the same way. Right. So that's one way of doing it. And I'll show you another way as we kind of get through the, the webinar. And um, I'm limiting my file size because um, this is not typical, but I'm just doing this for the sake of the webinar. Usually I'll just click that off. Um, I'm not going to use any presets. I could just click that if I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And the image would come right back in next to the original image. I don't like to import my images that way in my workflow because it can get a little confusing 
although these are just virtual copies Lightroom is pretty smart it'll give you a little tear on the end there to let you know that that's a copy of your original that gets a little confusing sometimes especially in the selection process so I always isolate my images into separate folders right so or export into when I say isolate I'm just exporting into another folder that I call corrections I call everything corrections that's been through perfectly clear all right I'm gonna click the export button and I want to before I edit a before I edit a photo I, I rarely go in and say hey you know what I'm gonna open this up and see where it goes I usually have some sort of plan for what I want to do like for instance I want to intensify let's just go here to the quick presets I want to intensify the blues just a little bit more without um, increasing the the blacks you know I'm thinking about how I'm gonna do those things and there's a lot of ways to like they say a lot of ways to skin a cat right there is right I'm interested in the fastest way I may have to blog a photo and I want to get the processing done as quickly as possible so let's just one button click and see what we get now I'm gonna tell you for me I like this right here I want to deepen the blues so that's the direction I'm gonna go facial recognition see here so this face is turned at an angle so it's not gonna be that effective and I want you to know that so you understand the thresholds right his face is at an angle Facial recognition, not going to work so much. Uh, fixed dark, well, we know from our plan that we want deeper blue, so we can just rule that out. Process of elimination, one, two, three, four, we can rule those out. Fixed noise, right? Um, Perfectly Clear is really good at, at identifying noise. And one of the things that I'm going to advise you to do, because when you look at your image here, that will work great for the web. That's going to print a great 5 by 7 maybe even a uh, um, uh, 8 by 10 I know for a fact that this is gonna print a 16 by 20 canvas pretty well because he actually has this hanging in his house um, on a 16 by 20 canvas so um, just to give you a benchmark so when we zoom in you don't want to see a, you want this to be as textured as possible right you want to exposures I mean we're, we're shooting guerrilla style here like literally put a flash down unplanned shoot right you want to be able to see the details in your whites right that's usually a good tell for an exposure right you want to see details in your white you want to see details in your black right unless it's intentional here he's casting a shadow so this is going to be out of detail so um, anything like that that's natural you don't want to worry about that so much you just want to be anything you can see that's going to be important you definitely want to have um, in um, highlighted so fixed tint right as you can see uh, this I did white balance this you, you can see this magenta start to introduce in here and it's just that's just uh, perfectly clear giving you the complete opposite color temperature so you look at vivid so I'm gonna I just clicked on vivid now I'm gonna go click on and you'll see that magenta just intensify there that could work if that's what you're looking for right I'm gonna stay with vivid landscape the thing that I've noticed about landscape, and here's how I want you to think, because they have, uh, Athen Tech has a picture of the mountains, but when I think of landscape, right, I think of the landscape of an image. It could be a person in a landscape. So don't rule this out as a choice, right? Now, I'm kind of digging that drama right there with the light, right? It helps to push his face out even more. I want you to see him. So you know what? I'm going to go in here. And this is where we get into adjusting colors, tones, um, sharpness. This is the meat and gravy, as I mentioned before. We can back off the opacity. If you use photo, um, Photoshop, you know about layers. I like, to, I like to equate this to a layer. So you have your original image, and then you have your, edit, your copy that you're editing right on top. right? And we can lower the opacity to bring that other image through or not. Right? So we want you see how I just reduced that look over here at the look right over here at the keyboard right and when you're adjusting images don't get fixated on just this one area work through in a Z formation that's the way we see things right that's the way we see things we read in a, in a Z pattern right you see that all right and if I click on screen you can see the difference so we just added that vibrancy without 
really destroying a lot of the properties in the photo. And that's the thing. I like the preciseness of being able to do this quickly. Now, that's going to be really important. And I say quickly, right? Um, if you're a super Photoshop user, if you're a super Lightroom user, if you're a super editor, this program is probably not going to fit perfectly into your workflow. I, I can show you how it can, right? In the end, matter of fact, I do a, a webinar on what I call finishing, where um, I use perfectly clear on the back end to make sure that I didn't add any problems. You can do that. So there's a there's a useful purpose for this program, no matter what level you're at. That's what I want you to know, definitely. Okay, back at presets, you see it? So I'm pretty satisfied with that because I don't want to over edit the image, right? We've got some intense, intenser blues. We're ready to go. I'm going to click cancel here because I've already got this image. Now, here's another image. And here's what I want you to know. I'm going to be checking in in about five minutes to see if you guys have any questions for me. So we're outside. I like to use flash. Um, I like to use flash outside. I love it. It's, it. it's in the way that I shoot. This was actually used on a magazine cover. And before I sent this in, um, this was pre perfectly clear. I didn't have perfectly clear at the time when I made this image. This was shot for an energy company for a magazine cover. They, they, they were talking about some new technology. As you can see, we're a little overexposed in the back there. The camera's saying because of 18% gray, right, which um, this image is very low contrasted, right, that only this is overexposed, but this really looks overexposed, right? So before I even go into perfectly clear, right, these are, these are the, I call them measures, right? These are the measures you want to look at, right? I'm going to turn those highlights down. Per Lightroom is very good at identifying highlights, right? As you can see, we got the back down, right? I'm going to just keep it right about there. And I'm also going to turn the whites down because I want to get the true, I want to get the true texture of his skin, number one, because when it's blown out, you can't really see any textures, right? And I want to get the tone as close as possible. I want his face to pop off the, the screen. I might even back off the exposure here, right? Just about right there. You see that? And I can, oops. I can sync that, right, all the way across if I've got a bunch of these images, right? Now, this is where I'm going to rely on perfectly clear to just, I need this to pop a little bit more. Right now, if we're looking at his face and we're looking at the background, there's a difference of maybe a half stop right there, right? Well, if we increase that too much, right, it's going to start to turn white, right? White is that middle point. It's going to start to turn white, right? Um, that could be what you want, but I doubt it, right? We want this to look, we want him to be the center, and then we want you to rotate backwards. So we want you to go here, here, or you can start here and go here. Any way that you look at this image, you're going to know that he's associated with this. You don't want your, your exposure to destroy that story, right? By having something too bright here and you don't see him or vice versa. Let's go into... Here's another way. I'm not going to open the image this way, but I want to show you. So control click and edit in perfectly clear is another way. This is when you're finished editing this image, what's going to happen is it's going to come right back in next to your, your original. So then you'll have your edited image sitting right here next to this image. I'm just going to go shift command E and I'm going to go to corrections. This is set up for, uh, have my corrections folder set up and you can batch with, uh, I'm, I'm going to backtrack a little bit. When you're batching, you can batch a hundred images. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shoot an event right after this webinar and I'm usually I'll deliver a hundred, 120 images to the client. Right. Um, I, I just batch process them, you know, and a lot of the ways that I'm shooting the images, you know, I'm shooting into low contrast situations so that I don't have to work that hard. My camera doesn't work, have to work that hard. Okay, so here's our image, and I'm just going to click through. As you can see, Vivid is giving us, you know, just a lot of good depth in the back right here, right? His face is popping. Fixed noise, landscape. You see it just kind of darkened. So now we've got like a greater contrast here. 
I don't want that. That looks like it could work. So, it, and it's literally, if you're going to spend any time, it's just figuring out what you want, right? Now, I'm going to choose fixed tent in this case because time of day, right? Time of day. This is a difficult shot because he's wearing this brim, right? And the sun, as you can see, the sun's coming from here, right? Got a flash, or the, the flash is coming from here, right? Which is, that's what's creating the shadow. So I've got the flash somewhere over here on a, on a light stand, right? And I think the sun is actually coming from right here. I can't remember. It was a shot about two or three years ago, right? Um, I'm going to choose this just because of the time of day. I don't want you to be confused about the time of day. So if you do a cool shot, right, that could signal that it was shot in the morning, right? Let's enlarge this. You can see facial recognition. Um, he's too far back, right? I want to. I'm going to. I'm going to talk about that, right? There we go. And I'm literally done. I could just sync this across, or I could create. Um, I mentioned earlier about presets, right? I could go right in here and just select a preset, big eyes. Uh, I'm just randomly picking something, fix exposure, right? And then sync that all the way across. And I can do it without even going into uh, the program. I'm going to check in for some questions. We're at the bottom of the hour. And where are we at here? There we go. Okay, looks like we're doing good. Okay, let's see. William Mosley. What if I have an image with multiple? You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna get to that in just a second. Hey, your, your timing um, couldn't be better. Hey, Mario, how are you? Jandra, can you layer the effects? Um, actually, that's what's happening. You can't see it. Um, you can't actually see the layers like in Photoshop where you can delete a single layer. You can't do that. But it is layering. Um, the order that you layer in is, you know, that's not something, I, I mean, unless you're sitting there writing it down. Okay, I adjusted this slider. Um, it's not going to be like Photoshop. I can definitely tell you that. So keep that in mind as you're you're working through. You you just have to kind of gauge it based on uh, how you're moving your sliders. You can and and the solution to this is uh, let's see here can can I bump up the details and then just hit you? Yes. So yeah, you can do that. Um, you just you won't you just won't be able to see it kind of like in a hierarchical format like you would in um, in Photoshop. So, yes. All right. You guys are asking some good questions here. I like that. Right? It gets me thinking about the program even more. All right. Now, I'm going to – let me just – let me see if you guys – because sometimes you guys might be formulated questions. Before I move on, let me just make sure here. Uh, okay. I'm going to come back right about 10 minutes before with some other questions. I'll hang out for about five minutes after if you, if you think of something. All right. Now, let's let's address William Mosley's question. Here's a group shot. They're far back and and obviously there's six people here. This is a this is a pretty difficult shot because you're, what you're doing here is um you're you're trying to blend the background and the foreground light. This is this isn't the final image. The actually the actual image that I use is completely different. And I want you to be super cautious of this lens dust up here, right? Um get your camera cleaned. I'm changing, sometimes I'll change lenses on location, which is not a good thing to do, right? Because the minute you pop that lens off, some dust is flying in your camera, but sometimes I'll see a shot and I'll just get excited and go for it. So um, keep that in mind. This is an easy fix, by the way. Just go like, just like that and voila. Okay, there we go. Now, here's our shot. Um, I'm not going to do any pre-adjustments on this, right? Um, and I'm giving you my thinking. As you can see, I've got a light going. I'm real big on that. I like to see just slight details in my photo, right? When I'm when I'm creating them, I like to see the slight details, right? When I zoom down, I want to see it. I want it to look natural. Um, I'm pretty organic in terms of just kind of how I light. You know, I like it to be. I don't like the lighting to overpower. You know, that that doesn't mean that the other styles are right. Or wrong it just means it's different right 
So I'm looking at this. I want to make sure that we have the level of detail in there. We have our, our whites isn't blown out, right? Let's take this photo in. I actually edited this photo in Nick Filters, the, the final one that went to print, and they used this as a full page truck, which means they spread it across the, the photo. And this is a national magazine, and I think, uh, I believe international as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go Shift Command E, right? And if I was, this is environmental portrait, I would just go in here and uh, put that in the environmental folder. I think this is the one, I'm not really sure. Right, click choose so that it loads into the folder. Click export. Right, yep, that was the right one. And I'm going to overwrite this because I already have it in the folder. Right, raw file. Keep in mind, you want as much data as possible. Let me and let me throw a nugget at you, really quick. If you're shooting a JPEG file, um, you're going to lose a lot of header information that could help you if you needed to make a certain adjustment in the photo. So um, you might lose your, your white balance, you might lose your, um, your white balance, your tent, all those, are, those they're not going to be recorded because it's a block of information in a file. And the, the goal in shooting a JPEG is to reduce the file size so they start to cut out certain instructions um, related to it. So keep that in mind. So shoot raw files, storage is very inexpensive. Right. So as you can see, it's making a minor adjustment. Right. The thing that makes perfectly clear. Really good is its ability to analyze what needs to be done. Right. This photo was taken was white balanced with an expo disc. And basically what I did is to reduce uh, the because um, it was really, really bright out here, as you can see, to reduce it, I actually expo the sun. So I could reduce knock or knock down the highlight. And remember, when RGB crosses, when red, blue, and green crosses in the spectrum at the same time, right? At some point, the colors turn white. It's very important for you to know colors turn completely white. And that's how perfectly clear analyzes, analyzes what needs to be done. Hey, you know what? That's an abnormal white. You know what? Let's reduce it down. But if you're creating a bad exposure, nothing's going to help you so let's zoom through these quick fixes here um, probably not going to use this because um, it just deepened everything that I set up my lights to accomplish right so uh, this is intentional I, I want I want you to see their shoes I want you to know that these are working guys those are the small nuances in my photo I want you to I want you to see that right so I'm not going to do that I'm also not going to use fixed tint because I just mentioned that I used an expo disc right and it's just the, per the program is so intelligent in terms of how it analyzes your images, right? It just gives you the opposite, green, magenta, green, magenta. You see that? So it's just saying, well, okay, that looks good. I mean, are you, do you want the opposite, right? Fixed start. Um, that could work. And to answer uh, one of the questions that I saw, right, here's where we can stack our adjustment, right? So let's say I like that because you could like that. I could go right in here and just start overriding a lot of the settings. I could just back it off slightly right there, right? Remember, this is like a layer, right? I can back it off. I could increase the exposure here, right? Or I could back it off even more to get a little bit more depth. You see that? If I want more depth here, I could get there. You see that small change right there, right? If I want to increase the, the vibrancy, basically, we're just pushing the color with vibrancy. Right. And here's an interesting a lot of people. A lot of people don't know this. And, and I actually learned this. Um, if you go on to the Athen Tech site and, and um, there's chapters on vibrancy correction, um, tinting, all kinds of things that all, all types of chapters you can read about that not only helps you understand um, the product. It helps you to understand why. This, the corrections are doing what they're doing. And here's something I mentioned this at Photoshop World. I just um, I was at Photoshop World this past week and I uh, was speaking. And one of the things that I was really excited about was per was telling people that perfectly clear is really designed around the way that we see things. Right. It's designed around the way that we see images and color. And there's not a lot of programs out there that are going to do that for you. And that's what makes this, that's why I'm so excited about it, because when you've been doing this as long as I have and you struggle through images, 
and you, you see something like this come along, it's real easy to get excited about it because you know what? They just saved me a ton of time and money. All right. So facial recognition, not going to work here. And I'll tell you, it's not going to work here. They're too far back. And you won't be able to see the changes anyway. Look at their eyes are so small. I mean, no program's going to be able to see that. That's ridiculous. So don't have that expectation. It's not a real expectation, right? They're too far back. And use that as a benchmark, right? They're too far back. This is the facial recognition is really designed for portraiture, in your face portraiture. And I'm going to show you that in just a second, right? Okay, so I could just rock with that, but you know what? I think I want to go right here. I'm pretty much done. So if someone's looking a certain way or turned a certain way, um, you know, it doesn't matter. I could just sync this all the way across. All right, let's look at some portraits. I'm just going to cancel that out. Let me peek in and see if you guys uh, had any more questions here. I'm just cheating a little bit. Uh, you're left and right. You're not yes, you will have two copies. Um, one will be a virtual copy of the change that you just made. Keep in mind that it's good to isolate those. Jandra, it's good to op it's good to um, add those two separate folders so you don't get confused. Lightroom is hierarchical and it's really easy to get lost. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to get to this. Your second question. I'm going to get that get to that in the end. So hang out for that one because I got to actually read that, um, read through that, make sure I understand it. So let's look at let's look at some portraits really quick. And I'm glad you guys are answering these questions. It makes it way more interesting for me. Let's look at uh, some portraits. So here's uh, one of my assistants, right, um, Andrew. I usually have my assistant stand in for me um, before the client gets there because most of the time with shooting executives, they, it's it's hard enough to get them to pay attention because they're thinking about all this other stuff that they got to do. So when they get in, I need to make a quick connection to them. So I don't – lighting is going to be the least of my worries, right? I'm looking at a connection and pulling out their character, right? So executive walks up, boom. Now sometimes – they're not going to wipe their face off or they might walk up. They might be, you know, coming out of a meeting, stressed, their skin tone is going to be flushed. Things are going to happen, right? You don't have really have time to even bring them down sometimes. You just got to get in and start shooting. So one of the things that I'll do, I'll carry, um, you know, towels and things like that. I'll say, okay, pat your face down so that we don't get these extra highlights in here that I end up having to do more work for. And then sometimes you don't even have that option. Just turn the highlights down. You see that? Just turn the highlights down. And this is where I'm I'm thinking about perfectly clear, right? Okay, I know in perfectly clear post, I'm going to be able to, to save that highlight or I'm going to be able to do this. I'm literally thinking like that, right? Okay, let me just bring this back. And then I'm going to reset that so you can see. There's the original image. This is not the image that the client picked. Um, I picked this one because the exposure was hot on his face, right? I'm just going to go in and turn that highlight down and then turn the white down. We have to see a little. You don't want this too flat. We want to see specular light because when you go outside and you see a person naturally, you see that specular light. Command, Control, E. Right? And as you can see, the dialog box will come up, right? So we can bypass that if I knew exactly what I wanted to do, right? And if you've, if you've been to my street photography webinars where I'm shooting, I'll use this a lot. The event that I'm going to shoot today, I have an event that I'm shooting at uh, – Believe it or not, 11:30 webinar and out the door to a shoot, right? Okay, um, I'm gonna shoot into low contrast situations because I need to process the images, which I'm gonna deliver about 120 to a, to a client. I'm gonna batch process them. I'm gonna click this, export it into another folder, a corrected folder, and I'm out. Literally, right? This is one of those jobs where um, the profit margin is small, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on the photos. Okay. So now I'm opening up this image of this, this, this guy's an executive. They write apps for Kentucky Fried Chicken and um, a lot of the restaurant chains, right? So here's what Perfectly Clear is giving us right off the top. So you see that? We could probably rock with that a little bit, but I'm just not totally convinced on the skin, right? I was, you see it turn, how it turned blue? Well, this image is white balanced, so I know I don't need a fixed tint, and I definitely know I don't need landscape. You can rule those out. This is like algebra, right? I'm going to fix noise. We could rock with that, right? 
see how face slimming works this is the threshold so he's back a little further but he's also a little closer so let's let's try to rock with that and see right I'm gonna stack the adjustments so I just did an auto setting there and now I'm just gonna back that off this is the first way right I'm gonna back it off right I'm gonna back it off a little more here right it's still a little hot and it's still just a little too smooth right he's a you know like a middle-aged young guy right and as you can see I'm just backing these off I'm gonna back off the skin tone a little bit right I can whiten his teeth from here you see that see how it selects the teeth that is pretty intelligent I gotta tell you imagine doing a preset for this guy and knocking out ten of his images right see that see how it identified the teeth face slimming right goes right in for the cheeks you gotta be really careful with this because if you have a person and their face is just a little bit bigger here right um, and you turn them straight onto the camera it's gonna make their face look even bigger but if you have face slimming you can just do it just like this you see that voila it's it's really just that easy let's take a look at another texture um, I, I chose these people because um, they're not usually they want to show you the beautiful girl right I want to show you the real person because these are the type of edits you're gonna be doing when you get that supermodel on camera it's gonna be few and far between in, in a lot of cases so um, this is going to be more of what you're going to see in the real world. All right, so let's zoom out here. So you can see the background is blowing out here, right? We can just bump that down just like that. That'll give us uh, the right. And this is how I'm gauging my images going into my, my processing because if it's going in, blowing out, and then you apply like a heavy edit to it, you're just going to destroy that image, right, even more. So you want to go in with a perfect image. Did I say perfect? perfectly clear you want to go in perfectly clear okay I'm messing around a little bit okay you want to be perfectly clear on how you want to start your image right so um, I, when I'm photographing and cause some women they like to pull their hair forward right here you see how it'll cast a shadow you can turn them right and and turn this into the light You're, but when they're pulling it forward like that you're always gonna get that shot you gotta be really careful my gauge for that is um, I just try to get it to run along the corner of the eye because it is a natural shadow. I just don't want it cutting across the eye, right? And some people will want to hang their hair across the eye. That's a judgment call, all right? So shift, edit, right? And if I want to choose the folder that I'm going to go to, let's see here. I think this one is it right here. Let's see if that's it. It's my correction folder. Okay, not wrong folder. But that's how I would export my images out to a folder. Um, the idea about exporting it out to a separate folder is so that I don't get confused about where the edit is because the more you edit the image and things you start, the more you're gonna get confused about it. Okay, so here's our before. It got a little darker, as you can see, right? But that's okay, right? You see how we go from low contrast to more contrast, right? I could rock with that. Look at her facial feature. I'm going to enlarge that up so you guys can really see it. You see that? Here's the importance of doing something like this. Sometimes clients will, with me, I shoot tethered. So the clients there, they're picking out the pictures and flagging. Sometimes there's not a lot of time for that. They're just going to rely on you to send them some proofs. You want to send people really good proofs. So I call them half edits. I'm going to send them half edits. They're going to pick out some photos, and we're going to rock from there. That way I don't spend a lot of time trying to figure out what they want, right? And as you can see, so we're zoomed in here, right? So you can see facial recognition is working really well. Sometimes you'll get a person in one eye will be bigger than the other. Well, you want to turn the big eye to the back. Just keep that in mind. Big eye to the back. You see that? So um, probably about there dark circles we can increase right be use this sparingly you can see where it's just really identifying those those areas use this sparingly don't over edit the images think about the purpose the end result we can even in highlight the um, the catch lights and as you can see here are my catch lights right now interesting thing we're working in a really tight space in a conference room I mean, so I, I just had no, I actually had a light on top of the conference room table. That's how tight it was, right? Face slimming. 
So she might like that, right? You see the difference there? Probably probably a little bit more realistic. It, it makes her hair look bigger on the outside. Volume of hair is really important in a portrait as well, right? Teeth whitening. You see how it identifies her mouth is not it's not a total smile, right? And I usually bring that down. Let me give you a portrait tip here. You don't want people smiling too big because it, what it does is it pushes their cheeks up. It makes it smaller, and then you just got a, a cheeky photo, right? See how that works out? And auto setting, we could rock with that too, right? And just back it off, just like that. Back off the smoothness just slightly, so we could get more of a high key look. See that? And then go into vibrancy and push that up. Now, if you've ever been to a uh, a Photoshop or any of the PP, WPPI imaging, um, we're at all the shows. I'm at all the shows. And you'll hear the presenters talking about Perfectly Clear, and, and, and we'll basically say this is an image correction program, that it's not a creative enhancement program. Well, I like to bend the rules a little bit. We can get creative in our edits, right? I just showed you right here how we can create a high key. We can. We can push the limits. And I like to do that, right? I like to push the limits. We can get it high key. So um, that's just one of the ways. We got time for one more. I'm going to duck in here and see if you guys got a question for me. Um, it took two shots of two people close up with PC. Yes, um, it will. It, and it depends. I don't, have, I don't think I have those two shots in there, William, but um, it will. Uh, if you, if you, I'm not sure how the schedule is going to work out. I'm usually uh, on every Thursday. This is the first Saturday that I've done. Um, I'll usually have a, if I'm doing, if I'm presenting on event photography, I'll usually have a, um, I'll usually have a picture of two people up close to show you how facial recognition can pick up on both people. That's going to be super critical when you're doing event photography and if you want to sell pictures if sell the pictures doesn't mean selling them the actual pictures you want to sell pictures you want to sell them on the fact that you're a really good event photographer when you bring those photos back edit it to them where their wrinkle wrinkles are reduced their facial features are looking good that's going to increase your odds of getting more especially corporate event jobs you're like wow that guy edited our face in a hundred photos that's the power in this program it's not just the editing right you see that we're going to back off. I got to back off the uh, the eye part, the dark circles. Did you see where it's kind of bleeding off right there? Right. So I'm just going to back that off. You want to look, you want to run through and look at all those highlights. Zoom in to 100% always so you get a level of detail, right? See that? That's, for me, that's pushing the edit, right? This image was shot um, a while back right way before perfectly clear all right let me see if I can squeeze in one more image let's 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 tackle this one right here now this is a real interesting photo because he has a, an oval face and whenever you're photographing a person with an oval face the thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to shoot them straight on because if you do, I'm actually up at an angle. You want to reduce this part right here. And as you can see, it reduces this cheek area right here, right? But he also has some things going on under the eyes, right? Remember my assistant Andrew was standing there, right? I want to get the, keep the light as consistent as possible. They chose this location because of the this uh, textured background is really important to their company logo. All right. So I can just go right in. Boom. Matter of fact, this this uh, the final image is actually on my website. This I don't think this is the final, All right? We can go right in and uh, just kind of pick. He's not smiling. Um, we can go into face slimming. There we go. You see that? Remember early on when I showed you my my friend the producer, right? How he's turned at an angle. Well, he's turned at an angle. This is extreme angle, and I'm up. Right, facial um, slimming is not picking it up. I want you to keep that in mind. I intentionally took away his jawline right here by turning him. So, um, most facial recognition programs, they're looking for these lines, and it's not here. It, the line goes, so it's going to avoid it. Right? 
um, I am I am larger. Let's see how that works. So you see, those are the thresholds that I want you guys to know about when you're working with the program. Because people will say, oh, it didn't work. It, oh, it works, right? It might be out of the, the range or the threshold of the program, right? Keep that in mind. So when you're photographing your subjects, right, you have your creative positioning and then you have your your production positioning. And what that means is if you're taking a portrait, you want to keep them as standard as possible in the pose for production value. And if you're, if you're going to go creative, then, you know, you want to keep it limited to maybe 10 photos, you know, maybe five. It just depends on your level of and, and ability to edit a photo and kind of what your workflow is. So that's an, ex this is a, an extreme angle because of his face and his hair. I want the proportions to his head and body to be the same. Right, I don't, this guy has a, an oval face. His his body looks pretty narrow right here. Right, I don't want any conflicts with that. All right, we got about five minutes left, and I'm just gonna click cancel here. I hope I was able to give you guys some information that's really gonna help you to better understand perfectly clear, and help you to get through your workflows faster. That's the the key thing here, right? And here's how I want you to really kind of understand this. Editing workflows are layered. The more you layer them, the better you're going to be. And here's why. When you layer your workflows, if something is not working or something changes, you can pull that part out and plug something in. It's like a battery, right? The battery, the old battery, pull it out, put in a new battery, right? Think about it like that. You can change. You can keep your workflow fluid and dynamic. Here's how it looks visually. This is the simple workflow. I actually have a, a workflow seminar that, or a webinar that I do, seminar two. Um, and it outlines processes that you can plug anything into, right? So from the camera, you're coming in from your master file off the camera, going into perfectly clear, doing an image correction and bringing it out as a corrected file. That was everything that we did today. The step beyond this, which I cover in a lot of other webinars, is to go into a, a creative enhancement, right? Where you've got a corrected folder and um, you have all your images in there and that's always going to be your starting point as opposed to just going back to your master file and trying to recreate that image all over again. You can start from a corrected point. So that saves you time there as well. All right. Image corrections are the foundation for building creative enhancements. It really is. If you really want to get better and faster at what you do, create a foundation, create a workflow that's built around having a correction workflow it'll save you a lot of time in the end all right so I'm gonna take some questions here um, I'm gonna read through that other question that, um, that that's on there and the thing that I want you to the thing I want to give you guys a little uh, uh, the carrot and stick kind of thing um, find me on Twitter at Keith B Dixon mention that you were at my perfectly clear webinar and I'll send you a discount code it's going to save you some money not only am I going to give you some some tips and some strategies to get your work done faster I'm going to save you some money too that's my thing that's what I do right I help people all right photographers let's let's let me go in here I'm going to just make sure that we uh okay Jandra so I'm reading your question. If you select landscape and you don't like the effect, you need to hit the undo or something. This is where I get stumped. Um, you, you know what? You do. Because whatever, wherever you leave the program, like let's say you leave in landscape mode, um, the, the problem that you're going to have is it's going to default back to that. And you know what? That's something that I really, um, I'll have to kind of talk to the, the designers about because I, I totally understand where you're going here. The undo button. Maybe we need an undo button. I haven't. I don't see an undo button on here. But that's something that I'll definitely bring up. Is is just undo. Bring me back to an original state. So, Jandra, I totally understand what what, what you mean there. But um, for the most part, you're going to start with a default preset. William, it took two shots. People close up. Okay. Looks like we got all the questions. Let me just. Okay. One more. 
see here. So if you ex so if you export into a new corrections folder, but then make new copy, we save twice. Yeah, we, I think we got to that one. Okay, yeah. All right. Hey guys, we got about a minute left. Hit me with some questions. And uh, again, so you can find me on Facebook. And and while I I got about 30, 40 seconds here. Um, the Athen Tech webs. Oh, by the way, I just want to share this with you guys. Rick Salmon, uh, really good guy. Um, he's going to be talking about his, his images in Cuba and uh, Route 66 that he shot. Um, he's going to be on September 3rd. Um, his presentation style is really good. It's really straightforward. Um, not a lot of fluff. And he's going to show you some good images and good style. Um, on the 27th, I'm going to be talking about landscape photography and how I create uh, my images in post with uh, perfectly clear. And I had mentioned to you guys that I had um, I do something called a finishing process. I'll show you that in here. So, and lastly, be sure to visit the site. Go to the support section. The blog. The blog has some really interesting uh, articles on here from other photographers that'll that'll basically help you to understand. Here's a uh, John Barclay shoots really good stuff. David Zeiser, um, I've been following him for years. Um, he's one of the first wedding photographers I actually followed back in almost 18 years ago. And he still should. I just saw him at Photoshop World, by the way. I was like, you're still going strong. He said, I'm still doing it. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on here. You can get a lot of ideals about how photographers uh, use their work. And also I have an article on here as well. Um, let's see, popular posts. So you just go right in. And you can just type in Keith B. Dixon. So um, flat colors and dynamic range. This is, a, this is a really popular article for a long time. I wrote this back in April um, where I talk about dynamic range. And uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about me, you can go at it right there. All right, folks, it's been good. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll just check the line. Should I batch? Okay, so Jandra's got one more question. I'll just jump on that. Should I batch all of the outdoor wedding shots? Yes. Jandra, I got to tell you, I love it. I mean, you really, I, I love that the fact that you're taking advantage of, um, you know, the, the, the webinar for sure. Separate them. It, it will make life a lot easier for you. Although Perfectly Care can um, distinguish the difference between the two, I would definitely um, separate them. So your inside outside shots, so this is going to make your workflow a lot easier. Okay, folks, I want to thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you can be doing a lot of other things on this Saturday. Um, I'm also um, going to be saving these videos to my uh, YouTube page. So if you miss something, you can go back and see it there. And I'll tw you'll see that if you're following me on Twitter, Facebook, wherever your social media is, you'll see it. Um, thank you again. I appreciate it. Keith B. Dixon, signing out.